And uh, so my name is Muriel. I'm uh, the International uh, Key Account Manager at IGLS. That stands for uh, Integrated Genetic Laboratory Service and who's actually uh, organizing this, um, mm -hmm. this um, seminar online. Okay. Well, my role here is just to introduce you to Tamara Mateo. She's our expert uh, tonight and the, and the subject she uh, will address today, all right? Uh, Tamara has a PhD in molecular biosciences, and she also um, is board certified in clinical immunology. And she's our uh, specialist in cellular immunology and reproductive uh, Im immunology at EG uh, IGLS. Sorry. Okay. Um, Tamara will uh, work off, work. Uh, through, walk us through uh, the importance of the uh, immune system in the endometrium, the key role of immune cells, and how immunological alterations can affect the success of the pregnancy. Okay, so that's it. That's all for me now. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased to hand over to uh, Tamara. And uh, well, uh, let's get down to business, Tamara. Okay, thank you, Muriel, for your presentation. And thank you, all of the uh, participants, to be here. Now we are going to talk about the role of the immune system in human reproduction. Before to get into detail about the role of the immune system in reproduction, let's have a brief introduction about the immune system. The immune system is a complex network of cells tissue, organs, and substances that fight against molecules that are recognized as foreign. The defense against these exogenous components is mediated by a sequential and coordinated responses that are called, called innate and adaptive immunity. Both immunity responses are composed by several cell types, their substances and other proteins. The first line to fight against this exogenous component is the innate immunity. These cells uh, fight this exogenous component in a non-specific manner. In the meanwhile, the dendritic cells interact with cells from the adaptive immunity and these interactions promote their maturation and the differentiation of this adaptive immunity. These cells will fight in a second line of defense and they fight in an specific matter. The cells from the adaptive immunity and as recently discovered, some of the subtypes of cells from the innate immunity uh, have memory. That means that in a second uh, encounter with the pathogen, the immune system is going to respond quicker, quicker and more effectively. Here, I would like to point out some of the immune cells that we are going to see in more detail after. In the innate immunity, we have natural killer cells, macrophages, and dendritic cells. In the case of the adaptive immunity, we have B cells and T cells that are subdivided into subtypes. CD4 T cells, also known as helper T cells, and CD8 T cells, also known as cytotoxic T cells. And these cells, how can they manage and fight against the pathogens? Well, depending on the cell, uh, the immune cell is going to fight specifically. In the case of macrophages, they phagocyte the pathogen, introduce the pathogen inside the cytoplasm and destroy it. In the case of the NK cells, they have receptors in their surface. The receptors can recognize receptors located in the surface of the infected cells. This recognition or the absence of it uh, will trigger the activation of the natural killer cells. These cells will secrete to the microenvironment proteins that will provoke the lysis from the infected cells. 
Here, I would like also to point out some receptors that are going to be essential in human reproduction. These receptors are, in the case of the NK cells, the key receptors that we already know, and some others that are important to the recognition of the trophoblasts, such as NKG2A and ILT2. These receptors recognize proteins located on the membrane surface of the trophoblast. These proteins belong to the complex of the human leukocyte antigen. In this case, the uh, trophoblast express HLIC, G, and E. On the other hand, we have the adaptative immunity. The adaptative immunity can respond in two matters also. There is a cellular response. The cellular response is uh, done by CD8 T cells. This, in this case, the CD8 T cells recognize the infected cells and provoke their lysis, such as like a similar uh, in a similar way as NK cells. On the other hand, we have the ayumoral response. In these cases, the interaction between the B cells and the helper T cells promote, for one hand, the differentiation and maturation of the B cells that uh, are differentiated as plasma B cells. And these plasma B cells produce antibodies that are specific for the pathogen. On the other hand, the CD4 T cells are going to be differentiated in a different helper T cell subset. Here, you have some of the helper T cells subset that had been described in humans. I want to point out four of them because the, these four are going to be essential for a human reproduction, actually. These cells are Th1 that produce interferon gamma, and TH17 that produce IL interleukin 17 and IL22. Both these cells are going to provoke a pro inflammatory environment. On the other hand, we have T helper 2, TH2 cells, that with the production of IL4, 5, and 13 are going to uh, create an anti inflammatory environment. Finally, we have the regulatory T cells. These T cells produce IL-10 and THF beta. These cytokines are essential to regulate the immune response. They also promote immune tolerance, in this case, through the embryo. And why is the immune system important in human reproduction? Well, as we already know, the embryo contains 50% of a pathogen genetic informa information. This information is going to be recognized by the female immune system that is going to attack this, this, the embryo in this case. However, we all know that this is not happening. And this is because the immune cells from the female uh, maternal reproductive tract have a unique phenotype and functions that promote the pregnancy. These interactions between the immune cells and all the components related to the reproductive system is a, a study in the file of medicine called reproductive immunology. Here in this graphic, you have the number of publications related to reproductive immunology that has been published in the last decade. As you can see here, there has been a significant increase of the number of publications during the last uh, years, meaning that there is a, an increase important of the role of the immune system in human reproduction. Having uh, said that, let's see the role of the immune system in the whole pregnancy period. As I said before, these immune cells located in the female reproductive tract, tract uh, are, uh, have a unique phenotype and functions that promote pregnancy. These immune cells are located through the female reproductive tract during, before, and after pregnancy. 
As you can see here, depending on the region of the female reproductive tract, the levels of these immune cells are uh, different and specific. And that is because in every location, uh, there are functional uh, needs that need to be done by the immune cells. So the immune profile of every region is specific for that function. These cells also uh, work or have their function uh, we, uh, both with the direct and an indirect interaction between the fetus and the maternal immune cell, but also with the direct and indirect interaction between the, the whole, the all the immune cells, uh, one from each other. These cells have an essential role in the physiological and anatomical changes, changes that are occurring in the uterus during pregnancy. We can classify this function in three uh, in three in three types. First, first one, the immune cells have an important role in promoting the immune tolerance of the fetus. They also modulate the inflammatory environment that is happening in that region. Finally, they also are essential for the tissue and vascular remodeling that is occurring in the uterus during pregnancy. Here you have a, a publication from Wetlock and collaborators. And in this study, they analyzed the levels of the immune cells in pregnant women in the first trimester, second trimester, and third trimester, and compare the immune levels with a non-pregnant women group. As we can see here, the NK cells increase uh, drastically during the first trimester. In fact, the, the, this is the cell that increased the most in that period. The cells uh, maintain this level and start decreasing during the second trimester. These cells are present uh, since the beginning of the pregnancy period and start increasing during the second trimester. On the other hand, myelate cells and B cells seems to, do, uh, to have similar levels during the whole pregnancy period. Uh, having seen the whole role of the immune system during the whole pregnancy, we now are going to focus about the immune profile and the function of the immune system in the implantation period. During implantation, 40% uh, of all the CDUA cells are composed with maternal immune cells. These cells are composed uh, mainly with natural cellular natural killer cells, also known as uterine NK cells, that represent a 70 to 80% of the total leukocyte. The most, the second most in, uh, important subpopulation are myelate cells. This myelase cell represent a 20 and 30% of the total leukocyte and are composed mainly with microphages and dendritic cells. These cells are also important, representing 10 to 20% of total leukocyte, and there are both CD8 positive cells and helper T cells. Finally, we have B cells that rep represent only 1% of total leukocyte. Now let's have a look about the function of each sub subtype of immune cell. The uterine NK cells, which are the most predominant cells during implantation, have a significant role in this process. And IL-15 promote the migration of uterine NK cells in the endometrium. There, the uterine NK cells are going to produce several cytokines that are important for tissue and vascular remodeling. For instance, IL-8 is, is, uh, is going to promote trophoblast invasion. GMCSF is going to promote trophoblast attraction. On the other hand, uterine NK cells also produce angiogenic factors, such as VEGF that promote 
the spiral artery remodeling. In this case, the direct interaction of the NK cells and the trophoblast has also a role. The interaction between the KIR and the HLAC receptors is also promoting the trophoblast invasion. Moreover, the interaction with the HLAG uh, located in the surface of the trophoblast is going to promote the production of these angiogenic factors. The uterine NK cells also have a role in immune tolerance. As I said before, they have a unique phenotype and function. In this case, the uterine NK cells has been shown to have a lower cytotoxic activity. Moreover, the direct interaction between the receptor located in the uterine NK cells and the HLAE located in the trophoblast also prevent the lysis of the trophoblast. Finally, uterine NK cells also produce several growth factors such as osteoglycine and pleiotropin. These factors are going to promote petal growth. The second most, uh, in most important subpopulation are myelate cells, composed mainly with microphages and dendritic cells. These cells also have an important role in tissue and vascular remodeling through the secretion or of THF beta. In fact, the uterine NK cells and microphages uh, erode the spiral arteries and that provokes the formation of a fibrinoid wall that is embedded with placental uh, fetal trophoblast. This results in the dilatation of the spiral arteries, which decreases the force and max maximizes the volume of the maternal blood bathing to the placenta. Moreover, these cells have also a role in inducing immune tolerance and regulating the inflammatory balance. And as I said before, they produce Th beta and also IL-10, which are cytokines known to uh, regulate the immune response. Moreover, these, micro these macrophages and dendritic cells also uh, promote the depletion of tri tryptophan in the environment through the secretion of IDO. More, uh, furthermore, these cells also interact directly with effector T cells via PD1, PD1, L1 interaction. All these uh, functional activities are going to provoke that the effector T cells uh, are not activated. In all, in all of the all of these functions will uh, impede the uh, alteration or the immune response through the uh, embryo, through the trophoblast. The third subpopulation are T cells. As I said before, these T cells can be subdivided into groups. The cytotoxic T cells or CD8 T cells, uh, in the same manner as uterine Yenka cells, are known to have a lower cytotoxic activity. This lower cytotoxic activity is uh, promoting via the interaction with the T cells and the trophoblast. On the other hand, we have CD4 T cells. As I said before, we have seen four uh, helper T cell subtypes. These four subtypes can be classified in two groups. A pro-inflammatory group, which is composed with TH1, TH17. These two TH uh, helper cells produce or promote the invasion of the trophoblast and the tissular vascul and vascular angiogenesis and also protect the trophoblast and the mother from pathogens. However, an increased pro-inflammatory environment is detrimental to pregnancy. To resolve that in the, in, in the environment, there is also helper T cells subsets that have a role in promoting in controlling this pro-inflammatory environment, which are the group of anti-inflammatory uh, CD4 T cells. In this group, we have 
TH2 cells and regulatory T cells. These uh, cells are going to repress the TH1 and TH17 immunity and are going to regulate and block the immune response against the fetus. All of that will promote the immune tolerance of the fetus. Finally, we have the B cells. The B cells can be subdivided in three groups, B21, regulatory B cells, and B1A cells. The B21 cells are a lymphocyte that uh, produce asymmetric antibodies or also known pregnancy protective antibodies. These antibodies are known to recognize non-maternal antigens located in the trophoblast. However, these antibodies uh, have a, a structural modification that impair the activation of the immune response. In that manner, these protect the fetus from the attack. On the other hand, we have a recent B subpopulation, B1, B regulatory cells. These cells are known to produce IL-10. And as we have seen before, this IL-10 promote the immune tolerance and control the inflammatory balance by uh, blocking the immune activation. Finally, there is a third subtype of B cells. These B cells are known as B1A cells. These are characterized to produce polyreactive antibodies. The presence of polyreactive antibodies are detrimental to pregnancy. For, for that reason, in a normal pregnancy period, this subpopulation is decreased. So we have seen the role of the immune cells uh, separately, but we must know that these immune cells interact one from each other and the composition of this immune profile is going to establish an inflammatory balance in the pregnant woman. This inflammatory balance, if we analyze the whole pregnancy period, uh, can be subdivided in three, in three stages. In the first trimester, there is a first pro-inflammatory balance that we have already seen. And this pro-inflammatory balance promotes implantation and placentation. Then in the second trimester, we have an anti-inflammatory uh, state that is uh, promoted mainly with TH2 and M M2 microphages. In this state, this anti-inflammatory state is important to promote fetal, fetal growth. Finally, in the third trimester, there is a second pro-inflammatory environment that is, uh, inter that is necessary and vital for parturition. In every one of these stages, there is a transitional stage. However, there is, there is nowadays uh, not, no data and we don't know what is happening in these transitional stages. Here, you can see the inflammatory uh, transition in a normal pregnancy. Any alteration in the length of these inflammatory uh, stages or the presence or absence of these inflammatory transitions are going to lead to infertility. For instance, in the case of the implantation failure, an alteration in the inflammatory transition is, uh, is, ha is has, has been shown. In these cases, these alterations in the inflammatory transitions have been related to different immune dysregulations. As we can see here, we, it has been uh, published both increase of cytotoxic cells, increase of both pro-inflammatory cells, such as TH1, TH17, and also a decreased levels of regulatory T cells. There is also other alteration, such as an increase or and decreased levels of uterine NK cells and myolase cells. Moreover, it has been also uh, published that an increased cytotoxic activity uh, is related in these implantation failures. For, in, for instance, in, it has been published that uh, an increase 
of the an increased cytotoxic activity of the uterine NK cells is going to lead an increased spiral artery remodeling. Why is this detrimental to pregnancy? Well, we know that e pregnancy is a period that requires hypoxic condition. If there is an increased cytotoxic activity of the uterine NK cells, there is also an increased spiral artery remodeling that will increase the blood supplies to the placenta. This will damage this, this hypoxic active uh, environment that is going to be detrimental to pregnancy. Here, as I said before, the presence mm -hmm. of polyreactive mm -hmm. antibodies has also been described in these uh, mm -hmm. infertility problems. Well, if we have been uh, analyzed, if we have analyzed the immune profile of the patient and an immune dysregulation has been established, what can we do? Well, for that, we have immunotherapy. And before to see the current immunomodulatory treatments that are mm -hmm. currently being used, let's ask ourselves two questions. The first one, is the immune profile analysis in peripheral blood useful? Well, unfortunately, the answer is no. The immune cells populations present, present in the endometrium differs greatly from that observed in the peripheral blood. That is because the blood immune cells may be easily influenced by external factors, for instance. For that, the scientific community has not given credibility to use peripheral blood as a pronostic marker of reproductive immunology. The second question is, is the immune profile analysis in endometrial biopsy useful? Well, let it and other uh, uh, scientists have published that uh, patients with implantation failure has, uh, and when in, this, uh, when in the cases they have been determined the immune profile, an immune dysregulation has been described. That is not difficult to understand as we have seen before, the essential role of the immune cell in trophoblast invasion, vascular and tissular remodeling, also in fetal immunotolerance. So treated patients with immunomodulatory treatments may be beneficial. Unfortunately, it is nowadays well established the idea that constant immune suppression is crucial for pregnancy or for a successful pregnancy. In that matter, Dr. Moore and collaborators have proven that idea incorrectly. He demonstrated that the deletion of immune cells at the implantation site and the inhibition of key signaling pathways are actually detrimental to pregnancy and can lead to a pregnancy loss. For instance, the deletion of uterine NK cells may lead to a poor endometrial vascularity and may impede trophoblast invasions. Therefore, analyzing the immune profile of the endometrial tissue of the patient and determining which immune cells subpopulations are impaired may be used to determine the most suitable immunotherapy treatment. This personalized immunotherapy treatment has been shown to improve pregnancy outcome. Here, you can see a table uh, published by Lede and collaborators. In this study, Lede analyzed the immune profile of several patients. These patients were that, that have an immune dysregulation were classified in two groups. One group received personalized immunotherapy based on the endometrial immune dysregulation and the other group was treated with an unspecific immunosuppression. Here you can see that the life birth rate was higher in the group treated with personalized immunotherapy, and also the miscarriage rate was significantly lower also in this group. This uh, study demonstrates that personalized immunotherapy, sorry, uh, is important and crucial for treating these patients and to 
increase the successful of pregnancy. And how is the immunotherapy uh, in human reproductions? Well, in this case, here you have a latest publication of Melo and collaborators. In this study, they analyze the effectiveness of the current immunologic therapies in women with fertility problems. As we can see here, their conclusion is the following. Evidence was uncertain of an effect for most of the included intervention, owing to heterogeneous finding and a paucity of high quality studies. For, for certain patient subgroups, however, the use of a specific immunomodulatory therapies may offer some benefit. There is need for further large randomized controlled trials to corroborate these findings. So we can conclude that the immunomodulatory treatments in human reproductions are in the first stages and more further studies, controlled studies are uh, needed. Here in this following uh, table, you can see a compilation of the immunomodulatory treatments that are nowadays currently used by several physicians. These treatments uh, are administrated to the patients depending on the alteration in the immune profile. As you can see here, uh, each immune profile alteration can be treated by several uh, immunomodulatory treatments. For instance, that patients that has been described an increase of the TH1, TH2 ratio, that means an increased pro-inflammatory environment, can be treated with tracolimus, hydroxychloroquine, cyclosporine, vitamin D, or intravenous immunoglobulin. Here you can see that these treatments uh, increase the life birth rate. In the case of tracolimus, there is an increase of almost a 33-35%, and also this treatment decrease the miscarriage rate in these patients. However, it is important to point out that as we can, as we as you can see here, there are improvements, but there, there is also several publications that demonstrate that the immunotherapy treatment administered to the patients are uh, does not improve the pregnancy outcome. And that is because there is a need of more control and systematic trials to demonstrate the effectiveness of these therapies. And having seen that analyzing the immune profile in the implantation period is useful because we can administer to the patients a personalized immunotherapy, we now are going to show you uh, the IMAP test. The IMAP test is the test we have in our laboratory that analyzes the levels of immune cells that play an essential role in the implantation process in the endometrium. And this test allows us to identify any immune dysregulation. With the identification of this immune dysregulation, we'll uh, it will be possible for us to select the most suitable immunotherapy treatment for the patient. In the kit uh, you will receive, you have everything you need to obtain the endometrial biopsy and to send this endometrial biopsy back to us. This IMAP process is subdivided in six stages. So now let's have a quick look of all these six, uh, six stages. The first one is the most important one and is the obtention of the biopsy. As we have seen before, uh, the purpose of this test is to analyze the immune profile in the endometrium during the window of implantation. And more specifically, during the time when the trophoblast arrives to the endometrium and start invasion. For that reason, it is important to obtain the biopsy in the uh, proposed times we uh, indicate in the document, the document. 
depending on the fertility cycle the patient has been giving, we can determine this uh, perfect time, analyzing the date of the progesterone uptake or the levels of uh, estrogen and lutein hormones. Here you have the most uh, suitable period to obtain the biopsy. Uh, once you have obtained the biopsy, it is also important to be sure that you have obtained endometrial tissue. Here you have eight images showing samples or uh, examples of invalid samples and valid samples. On the left, you have four examples of invalid endometrial tissue. As you can see here, there is complete absence of endometrial tissue. We have received empty tubes and also tubes that only contain blood or mucosa. In that cases, we cannot analyze the immune profile because we lack of endometrial tissue. On the right side, you can see four examples of quality endometrial tissue. Both samples contain an uh, enough amount of endometrial tissue and you can see here that this tissue is colored uh, with a little pink rose color samples. Why is this important? Because once you obtain the sample, sometimes you can see that the sample is completely white. Most likely, the sample is composed by parenchymal uh, endometrial, which is the structure, the structural part of the endometrium. So it is more likely that there is not enough lymphocytes and we would, wouldn't be able to uh, send back to you a valuable uh, EMAP result report. All other important question during this process is that in the first moment you obtain the biopsy, uh, you have to keep uh, the biopsy in a refrigerated uh, environment in order to decrease the death rate. In the cryo tube you will receive, there is a buffer that, uh, that decreases the death rate, but we cannot block the death rate completely. So for that reason, you it's uh, necessary for you to immediately uh, put the sample in a refrigerated environment and send us back to us as soon as possible. Doing that, we will receive a sample uh, that contains uh, more viable cells that in, uh, that in other cases. When you send the samples, we receive the samples and we start the uh, procedure. First, we analyze that the samples contain endometrial tissue, eliminate blood and mucosa, and start the uh, the procedure by flow cytometry. In this case, we disaggregate the endometrial cells and resuspend the cells in a culture buffer. These cells, the immune cells uh, and other cells of our organisms are characterized to present in their surface, but also in their cytoplasm, uh, proteins that are expressed only by several subtypes. The identification sorry, of these uh, subtypes with allow us to determine the quantitative value of every sub sub subtype. For doing that, we use flow cytometry. Uh, in this um, technique, the cells are labeled with antibodies, uh, fluorescent labeled antibodies that recognize these specific proteins in all of the immune uh, subtypes. The cells are acquired by the flow cytometers that classify these subtypes of cells based on the fluorescent uh, detected by their receptors. This uh, flow cytometry technique allows us to obtain a quantitative uh, value of the immune cells analyzed. These immune cells analyzed uh, we include the quantitative value of the immune cells and we compare these values to the reference values published. In that cases, if there is any significant alterations, for instance, 
a decrease in gas cells or an increase of a TH1, TH2 ratio, you will see here that there is a significant alteration. In these cases, if there is a significant alteration, an immunomodulatory recommendation uh, will be on the immune report. This immunomodulatory recommendation will uh, try to reverse the immune dysregulation detected, detected in the patient, and this may improve the pregnancy outcome. And to summarize, first one, the immune system mediated pregnant woman defense and participate, participates actively along the whole gestational process. Second, the immune maternal awareness of the embryo is essential for the success of pregnancy. Third, the study of immune population should be carried out on endometrial tissue samples since there is no correlation between the local and the peripheral environment. Fourth, to obtain a valuable and informative EMA result report, it is essential to confirm the presence of quality endometrial tissue in the biopsy obtained. Fifth, the immune profile evaluation may be the most effective and reliable option to provide a personalized immunomodulatory treatment that may increase the pregnancy rate. And finally, further studies and well-designed clinical trial with systematic data collection is needed to develop new biological markers and therapeutic targets. This is the biography related to the immunotherapy recommendations. And thank you, you all, for your attention. And I will be pleased to answer any question you may have. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much, Tamara, for this presentation. That was really, really interesting. Okay. Um, yes. Um, uh, with uh, with that, let's get into the uh, QA section. Okay, there are there are some there are some questions already. In. Mm -hmm. Let me I read them out to you. Okay, the first one is saying, when doing the endometrial biopsy, we also recollect blood. Is mm -hmm. it relevant? Uh, is it relevant? But we can solve that. The important thing here is that you have to be sure that you have endometrial tissue in the tube. And in that case, when we, when we receive the sample and we realize that there is endometrial tissue and also blood, uh, before I start the uh, analyzing, we eliminate the blood because the presence of the blood can modify the levels of the immune cells detected. And so there won't be a correlation of the immune cells analyzed and the immune profile of the endometrium. Okay. 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 So um, there is another one coming. Uh, let me read out for you too. What happened if we realize the endometrial biopsy in another period that you recommend? such as P plus eight. Okay. Uh, okay, it's, you mean that you obtain the sample, but you do not obtain the sample in the progesterone day for 5.5 in another day. Well, uh, in that case, uh, we need to know first the purpose of the test that is determining the uh, immune profile during the moment of the implantation. If we obtain the samples days before or, or after this exact time, the immune profile analyzed may not be the real uh, immune profile in that uh, immune implantation date. However, having said that, nowadays there is no uh, data in analyzing the difference between P uh, day 0.5 point and day eight, for instance. However, this is one of the studies we are doing because we are recollecting samples 
in, in different period of times. And the main purpose is to analyze if there is difference and how to, to determine that. All right, okay. Um, one of the questions we've got here is, um, if the endometrial sample is not properly stored at 480 degrees, or it is sent to the laboratory later, does that affect the result? Uh, most probably, yes. We must know that since the moment we obtain the biopsy, and even though we kept the biopsy in the in, in the tube you have in the kit that contains a storage medium, the cells are going to die. That we cannot uh, do that from that. So if we if we receive the samples in five days or twenty, the percentage of viable cells will be lower, and that because of the limitation of the technique will provoke us that we are not able to analyze the immune cells. But one thing you can do, if you know that the sample is going to be uh, shipped in a different or in, a, in more days later, uh, we have had uh, cases when the samples have been received seven days after destruction. In this uh, case, uh, unfortunately, we couldn't send a valuable result. And that's what that's, that was because in the tube, there was uh, too much tissue. So even though there was a higher level of dead cells, there was also uh, enough cells to, to report a valuable result. So in these cases, you can solve this uh, extracting more tissue than the recommended in order to be sure that you will receive a valuable result. Okay. If you cannot change the, the date, the clinical date with the patient, I mean. Okay, uh, right. Um, that's, a, that's quite a common question that we've got from uh, our uh, attendees. How many immune cells do you analyze? Uh, around around 18, 20 uh, different immune cells. However, using the in published data, clinically, there are only a few that have been proven to have a relevance in pregnancy, in the pregnancy period. And from these types of cells, some of them have also a immunomodulatory recommendations. But yes, we are analyzing uh, different other cell types in order to create a database that will help us in the future to determine if this the alteration of other immune cells can be also be related to fertility problems. Okay, good. Uh, okay, we don't have any more questions at the moment, but let's wait. Uh, let's wait just a little bit to see if there is. Uh, one coming, okay, um, here they are, here it is. Uh, the um, one of our attendees asked, mm -hmm. um, the recommendation of immunotherapy you include in the report is able to restore any type of immune cell population? Uh, unfortunately, nowadays, no. The immunotherapy re uh, treatment in human reprodu reproduction is nowadays it, like in the first stages and more as we have seen before, more controlled clinical trials are needed. And nowadays the recommendation of immunotherapy treatments are also done if there is an alteration in the uterine and cells, if there is an alteration of B cells and if there is an alteration of the inflammatory balances. But if there is other alteration or the alteration comparing with control groups, nowadays there is no immunotherapy recommendation. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, no more questions coming and uh, we're just about the time anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so it's time we close the session. Uh, and, um, thank you so much for sticking with us until the end. Uh, sorry for the... Uh, 
inconveniences uh, for the technical um, problems. Mm -hmm. But uh, we thank you also for your, all your questions and all the interesting topics that were raised today. And uh, please join us in our future webinars. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.